Soldering a copper joint may seem straightforward, but there are a few hard-to-see mistakes that can result in weaker joints causing leaks. Avoid these common pitfalls to ensure every joint is as strong as it can be. Once your tube has been measured, cut, and reamed, clean and apply flux to the tube and fitting. Then you can begin to preheat the tube and fitting. Avoid heating only one side of your tube and fitting. The solder will be drawn towards the heat and increase the chances of creating voids you can't see. This is true for joints in both horizontal and vertical orientations. To begin correctly, heat the tube before heating the fitting. This will ensure the tube expands first for consistent capillary space with the fitting. If only the fitting is heated, then the tube may not reach the melting temperature of the solder, resulting in trapped flux and voids that could lead to failures. The goal is to expand the tube inside of the cup while bringing both the tube and fitting up to the solder's melting temperature. Imagine the face of the joint as a clock face. Starting at 6 o'clock, slowly heat your tube until you reach 3 o'clock. Repeat this process starting at 6 o'clock and moving to 9 o'clock. It's not necessary to preheat the top of the tube and fitting during this step. Next, preheat the fitting. Following the same process as the tube, start at 6 o'clock, slowly heat your fitting until you reach 3 o'clock, then again from 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock. With your tube and fitting preheated, move your torch to the back of the cup. Start with your torch at 6 o'clock and push the solder straight into the joint at 5 o'clock. If it melts, then your tube and fitting have reached the necessary temperature. The solder will flow into the joint towards your heat source using a process called capillary action. Be careful though. If too much heat is applied, the flux may begin to boil away, resulting in a poorly sealed joint. While keeping your torch slightly ahead, Move both the torch and solder around to 11 o'clock. Be careful to keep your torch slightly ahead of the solder. Failing to do so may result in voids being created. By the time you have reached 11 o'clock, the solder at the bottom of the joint should have solidified, providing a solid dam of solder. Then, go back to where you started, but now put your torch at 5 o'clock and solder at 6 o'clock and repeat the process in the opposite direction until you've completed the joint by bringing the torch back to 11 o'clock. You may notice excess flux being pushed out of the top of the joint. This is normal, indicating that the joint cannot accept any more solder. Now the joint is complete. Let the joint cool naturally before using a dry rag to clean off any excess flux. For additional information and resources, please visit us at copper.org.